One of the first questions that people ask me, how did you start uh, working and helping deaf people? Let me answer that. Many, many years ago, there was a missionary who came to our church. I was the pastor of the church. And he came in and visited with us, and I noticed he had 10 people with him. I thought, I'd never seen these people before. And as he brought them in, I noticed the missionary was signing. I had never seen deaf people before. I had never seen sign language before. And uh, as I preached, the missionary, his name was uh, Clifford Smith, and he interpreted for me. And I noticed and looked and watched, and it was strange for me. And when it was all done, uh, I went to meet with a missionary, and I said, thank you for bringing the deaf uh, with you to my church. And he smiled and said, I didn't bring the deaf here. The deaf live here. Wow, really? I never knew that. Well, the missionary left, but the deaf stayed. They live here. And God touched my heart. You're a pastor for all the people you need to visit with the deaf. And I finally decided I would visit with the deaf. But first I decided to do alone. I didn't want to feel awkward or embarrassed with hearing people with me. And so, how? I got an idea. Oh, I wrote and now I must visit with a deaf. I was nervous. I started driving and looking. Have you ever been on visitation before and wish the people were not at home? I was thinking, I hope they're not home. I was nervous and I looked at the house, lights were on. I had to visit. So I drove and parked. And as I did, I looked. The deaf had a large a German uh, uh, police dog. Large. I looked. I have always felt that people who have large dogs don't want to go to heaven. I just thought maybe I will go back home. Now, I looked, and God touched my heart. Visit. All right, I got out, and as I looked at, at the dog, I noticed the dog looked at me. And then I moved, the dog moved. I moved, the dog moved. Now, the, well, here I got to visit the dev. The dog is here. My car is there. I must visit with the deaf. So I walk up, and I look at the window. Oh, the deaf woman's right there. It's going to be easy. So I go over, take my sign, and I... Nothing. I can see the deaf woman. Nothing. Well, dumb, stupid me, the deaf can't hear you knock on the door. I didn't know that. Mm. So I walked over to the window. And finally, the woman looked and she, she said, Why? Scared me. I never heard voice of deaf people before. And I said, wow, I don't like this. So I started to go down, but the dog was there. I noticed that the dog did not bark. He didn't get mad. He just grinned. I noticed his tail didn't wag. 
He just looked, and I said, oh, I must visit with Adele. So I walked back up, and the deaf woman comes, opens the door. I said, Finally, she said, oh, she said, come on in. I said, I walk in, I look, and the woman left. I'm alone. She brought her husband. Oh! And three of us, I said, I remember, I grinned so much, I hurt. And finally, I got a pen. I gave it to them, and then, and they promised to come to church. Now I had the deaf. I must learn sign language. I went to visit a, a college, and there I heard there was a man that knew sign language. And as I visited, uh, it was Tennessee Temple University, and they introduced me to a man named, his name was Don Cabbage. Don uh, Cabbage. He was a student, but he said, I will come and teach sign language. First time he taught sign language, he came to my church. And for one week, he taught and taught sign language and left. And I, he told me later, when I left, I said, Lord, you need to help those people. I can't. <laughs> and God did. God helped us, and we started the uh, uh, ministry with the deaf. Wow, we had an interpreter that was learning, uh, a teacher, and I would preach, and I'd learn in sign language myself, and the deaf came, and it was wonderful. Then later, we had some deaf to get saved and join the church. The second time God touched my heart, a man, one of the first to join our church, his name was Alvin. Sign name was Alvin. And one night, he stood in sign language and sung the song, More, more about Jesus would I know. And really, I said, I wept. God touched my heart. The deaf need to know more about Jesus Christ. They need to know more. It really touched my heart. And I said, uh, uh, Lord, how? How? And God touched my heart. The deaf can read, and you can write, and you can mail and send out. So I got the idea. We will start a newspaper for the deaf. And then later we did tracts for the deaf. Later we did Bible courses for the deaf. And the newspaper was growing and growing. All Soon we had 5,000 people. We started with 50, just 50. But it grew to more than 5,000 people receiving it. And God began to bless and it began to grow out more and more. And then uh, we went to visit with the uh, Bill Rice Ranch uh, in uh, Tennessee, a camp for the deaf, Bill Rice Ranch. Uh, we felt it would be good to help the deaf there. I was a pastor, and we took our, our deaf to the Bill Rice Ranch. And my responsibility at night, I would have devotion with the deaf. I remember there was time to have devotion about 10 o'clock, and I, I taught them and taught them, 
And I said, uh, uh, if you're finished saved, you ought to thank God. Many, many deaf have never, never known how to be saved. And I said, good night, go to sleep. But the deaf, I turned the lights out, and I felt finished. But later, I could hear, whoop, 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 whoop. Thought, how? The deaf had flashlights. And they would put the flashlights and sign and sign. And I went over, and I got them and got them and got them. And I said, now, finish. I used a good sign. I said, look at this. Finish. And finally put them down. Finish. I looked and looked. One deaf boy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sounded like a bird. Whoop, whoop, yip, whoop, whoop. And, and I knew it was a deaf. I walked over. I looked. I could hear. He's under the covers. But I could hear the words. The deaf boy was praying. And he said, Jesus, thank you for saving me. And in the darkness alone, God touched my heart. He said, I want you to go with the deaf world. I want to use you with the deaf. I remember I said, no, 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 no. But finally, I gave up. I resigned my church and became a missionary, and I joined the Bill Rice Ranch. We were there for 20 years. Now, through, I've stayed and stayed and stayed, and I want to close with this last thought. Why do I stay faithful? Why did I continue? All of these years, remember the first deaf person name was Alvin? Well, Alvin had cancer, and he was close to death. And he said, I want to see Ted Camp. And I drove to visit my good friend. I loved him. And I went to visit him at the hospital, just the two of us. I had prayer with him, and when I finished, he shook hands with me, and I felt, it's five dollars. I said, no, you need money more than me. You got hospital debt. You keep, he said, no. He said, you don't understand. Money is not for you, but it's to help you with the deaf ministry. And then I, as I started to leave, he said, oh, take count. One more promise. It was the last time I'd had, I saw Alvin. Later, I preached his funeral in sign language. But Alvin said, Ted Camp, I want you to promise me you will never, never, never stop helping the dead. Promise me you will find, find, find more deaf, same as me, and help them know more about Jesus Christ. I stood, and I looked to God, and I looked to Alvin. It was a hard decision. And I said, Alvin, I promise you, I will never, never, never stop helping the deaf. Now, I want you to think about my story. There's a time that God touches your heart to help the deaf. God does not call every person to help the deaf, but God does call some. God picked me. And there's times that God might pick you and you and you. God picks people to do his work. And God used the deaf to open, to touch my heart. God used me 
through all these years, I continue to write and print and reach out. It has grown now into the world of ministry. We have seen thousands and thousands of deaf people to be saved. I feel that every person, that every interpreter and teacher with the deaf are the same as a missionary. You've got to learn a language. You've got to learn a, a different people. And God wants to use you. So right now, if God's touched your heart, it would be a good time for you to say, yes, uh, I, I will help. God says go into all the world, and that includes the deaf ministry. Now, I made that promise. I never close. There needs to be a time in your life to do the same as I did. There's been many times I've felt like quitting. There's times I've felt discouraged. And, he, and I told Carlene, and many, many times, uh, Carlene later said, you remember promise, remember promise. Whew. I told Alvin, and I told God, and I told Carlene. And Carlene will not let me forget. And there came a time that I felt I would quit the deaf ministry. And Carlene, my wife, said, remember your promise. So now, about 50 years We've continued and continued uh, because I, God called me. God touched my heart. God used a little deaf boy. God used other people. And now I promise I will not stop. I will not quit. I will not give up. I want to encourage you right now. Why don't you make that promise? Right in your Bible. On this day, I promise I will not stop, I will not quit, I will not give up. Now, in closing, how do you start a good deaf ministry? How? It's easy. Make you a sign. Go out and visit the deaf and grin until it hurts. And it breaks your heart when you see the need of the deaf people. God can use, if God uses me, God can use you. And it's wonderful. I look back now. Thank God for the time the missionary came to our church. Thank God for the time Alvin sung more about Jesus Christ. Thankful for the little deaf boy. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for the promise that Alvin made with him that I would not stop, quit, or give up. This is his work. Let's do more to change the deaf world for Christ. Can you be used of God? Yes. There comes a time when you need to surrender and there comes a time when you need to promise I will not stop, quit, or give up. God bless you.